Good evening everyone. I hope you all can see me live today and I'll be live with Dr. Jyoti Kapoor soon. And uh, I welcome to all of you for our Insta live session. And today because it's it's a World Mental Health Day, we're going to talk about issues related to mental health. Why mental health is important? Why everyone should invest in mental health is now it's a time we should talk about because we always try to ignore our mental health mostly nobody would want to invest in the mental health hi dr jyoti kapoor i welcome uh, to your hi, good evening. live session good evening and uh, dr jyoti kapoor is a very senior consultant uh, psychiatrist and psychotherapist with paris hospital gurgaon she will be uh, answering all the questions related to that and i hope it's going to clarify uh, to all of us that why everyone should invest in mental health so dr jyoti first of all uh, a warm welcome and uh, since you. today is a world mental health day and i think it's very important to talk about it now it's time and the topic of today is that why someone should invest in uh, you know mental health so people like us most of us they always try to invest on physical health we try to get our checkups done we go for the test we know that the doctors are available the hospitals are available. we are quite aware about it when it comes to mental health i think people are quite restricted uh not because the treatments i think because of what people will think about it what society will think about it that they have a problem so they are quite you know they they are they're not even sure about it and i also have a question when uh, where it's time to talk about why they should invest in mental health and how can they check on that their mental health is something which needs to be checked now and this is the time so i think we will be taking those uh, questions we will be talking about that soon anything you want to start with uh, what do you think uh, in today's scenario uh, how should we talk how should we think about mental health right uh, thanks richa and good evening everyone so mental health is an issue that we are talking about nowadays but how many of us actually accepts it that is the point that needs to be pondered that yes it is an important issue now for a real reality check every uh, one person among seven in india is currently suffering from a mental health issue and that's a huge number and recently during the covid uh, lockdown and the pandemic the numbers are uh rising like crazy we see them coming to our opd on a daily basis but despite that the percentage of uh, the total health budget that is spent on mental health in our country is less than 0.5% and which anyway is abysmal the it's a, like 1.15% of the total gdp spent on health and out of that 0.5% on mental health okay right. so which means that even at a national level we are not focusing on the mental health and why because at a community level at a social level and at an individual level we still don't understand the importance of mental health issue so mental health uh, day uh, we can celebrate every 10th of october but unless we understand that on a day to day basis it's an important aspect of our health health and we need to do something about it and investment not just in terms of the financial investment investment in terms of investment of our thought investment of our uh, time investment of a certain amount of uh, uh, what do you say resources into building our own mental wellness is important and hopefully uh, we'll be able to tackle some uh, doubts in that area today and people would be more willing to look at mental health from the perspective of well being rather than just you know somebody who is crazy or insane absolutely i think you have a uh... correctly mentioned the aspect behind it so we'll start with the a question do you think the physical health also impacts on the mental health uh see physical health uh and mental health are basically same thing they are health why because uh mind is part of the body i mean it's a function of the brain which is part of the body so yes physical health has a direct impact on mental health and vice versa now whenever we have a problem whether it is an acute physical problem or a chronic physical problem it increases the stress levels in our system 
and when there is a rise in stress level it leads to mental health issues so therefore mental health is affected directly by the physical health sure and how our own happiness you know affects our life see why are we living what are we seeking on a day to day basis so when you say happiness isn't it what we are looking for on a day to day basis and when that is what we are looking for and we don't get it uh, it's it's as important as important as that so when we have a you know you look at a young child and the young child enjoys every little thing he, he is, or she is able to you know smile and laugh and if you giggle he giggles back and that is when you see that there is a sense of well being happiness and then the child grows and when the child grows gradually things start burdening you okay you have to you know not dirty your clothes or do potty in a certain place to start you know studying in the school and the stresses start building and that spontaneous joy starts reducing and when it starts reducing how does it affect you it affects you both mentally as well as physically so a kid going to the school and saying i have a stomach ache okay so we think there is a stomach ache and in some cases there is but in most cases it is the stress so that is the connection between you know a general state of joy and happiness and your physical well being or in general well being so uh, happiness yes that's what we are looking for in life and we if we don't have it life starts feeling you know worthless and you know no point going on and that is the start from where the mental uh, issues start building up so uh, doctor in today's scenario you know that everybody goes through from a stress and uh, now there are a lot of aspects about it we have already spoken in our sessions about the anxiety and depression and all those things but you know as a viewer uh, yeah can you hear yeah, me now yeah yeah there was there was an network issue so i was asking that uh, since in today's scenario everybody goes through a stress but nobody actually understand then what is the time when actually you should get in touch with a psychiatrist now this is the time this is the level this is the understanding they don't understand they start fighting with themselves with their family members within their own you know and then it obviously the health gets impacted but they don't understand the limit of it what do you think about it see the 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 moment anything becomes persistent and pervasive which means that it is there all the time and that starts affecting your personal social and occupational life is the time when you seek help because before that you were probably able to manage it and now you can't manage it see uh, mental disorders are like disturbances in any order if you have acidity if you have acid in your stomach that's normal anybody would have acid because you need that acid to digest food but now you have hyperacidic and you had hyperacidity acidity once because you had a samosa fine and you dealt with it the second day you had a digene you dealt with it the third day you had another home remedy you dealt with it but it's still bugging you what would you do the fifth day the seventh day maybe the second week you would go to a doctor right so that is why we say that if something is going on say you're feeling sad and upset and the problem has passed but it's affecting your the way you look at life your performance your relationships you are losing interest in things around you and this is persisting and in clinical uh, diagnosis we give a period of 2 weeks but in general going and talking to a doctor doesn't mean that you will be labeled that you have a problem so talking to a doctor should not be a problem and that's why we are talking about investment we're talking about what we need to invest you go for a, a primary health checkup many of the people go for a primary health checkup how many of us go for a mental health checkup how many of us are willing to go for a screen or maybe you know just talk to a therapist and say you know this is how i deal with things should i do something about it none of us do right Absolutely. so that's why yeah if we want to wait till the red flags and yeah these are the red flags but i would say if you get an opportunity you have counselors nowadays and schools and colleges and organizations and otherwise if you have an opportunity you should go and talk about it sure since uh, as a quite senior uh, psychiatrist i think uh, and a lot of people know that the fact that you have been consulting very senior people like celebrities and people who are quite well known in the industry 
what have been your experience any experience would you want to share where you have transformed somebody who is going through from a, a mental health issue and uh, now they are fine they are, they are doing good and something which you want to talk about that yeah see um reaching to a psychiatrist for anybody is a huge issue more so for people uh, who are otherwise popular because of the confidentiality issues and nobody wants to talk about it so uh, many of the people avoid visiting a psychiatrist especially the ones who are uh, otherwise popular or have attained a celebrity status so they won't uh, want to go to one but when they do they have been harboring a lot of issues for a very long time and uh, i often say to many of my people that you know mental health issues nobody is immune to that so it's not like if you appear successful or if you are uh, you know being popular or you if you look happy externally all the time doesn't mean you can't have a problem and we see now in news that how many people suffer from it and end up actually having fatal consequences because of it so um, i do meet uh, a few of them and uh, some of them uh, hopefully and thankfully i have been able to help them understand their issues uh, from the film industry um, and entertainment industry so um, uh, i wouldn't be gi- giving any specifics but there have been somebody who had been sp- uh, smoking like uh, two packs of cigarette a day and working day in and day out had mood swings coming and going and high levels of irritability and it was impacting his performance uh, but uh, after 3 months of treatment his uh, smoking has come down to zero he is sleeping on time and he used to sleep at 4 am in the morning now he has made a routine sleeps at 11 wakes up at uh, 7 and tells me that people around him tell him that he is um, now you know much easier to deal with than he used to be earlier because of the irritability issues have improved so i guess those things happen whether you are a celebrity or a normal per, uh, person and that's what i think you are seeking that is what you are looking for so i frankly speaking i am doing my job but people who have come who have braved the stigma and come forward talked about it taken help i would say you know you get all the credit credit all my clients you get the credit i mean i am just doing my job that's such a satisfaction when you actually transform somebody life and now they're happily living they will be always thankful to you and uh, i think people like you uh, i would rather say it's it might be easier to correct the health but playing with the mind such a such a duty such a something uh, it's not easy it's quite a tough job so i think somebody should actually uh, you know we always have a gratitude feeling for everyone like you who have been doing this uh, support for our society and we are blessed to have people like you in india that now there is uh, opportunity for everyone to you know seek for a help so i'm going to pick up some question uh, there is a question from somebody called articulture says this lockdown has impacted kids also their study modes have changed and outside play no social meets with friends please give some tips it's it's a it's a very very important question and in fact i was in uh, doing a webinar just some time back with the iit bhu kids on loneliness and uh, the surveys that have been conducted recently have shown that the loneliness issue is quite rampant in the 16 years to 24 year age group rather than what is generally believed that it is more often in the senior 75 plus year age group now this is a survey we are particularly doing with this age group but unfortunately the you the younger kids the the youngest of the lot the 3 years old the 4 year olds they are the ones who nobody is asking how you're feeling and in our pediatrics department and recently i had a uh, session along with the pediatrician we are seeing this happening a kid who is like barely 3 years old started having uh, started crying and having anxiety about what if she develops covid now this is a 3 year old Oh so God. what we see happening over here with the onslaught of negative information in media with everybody sitting on the dining table and talking about covid scenario the kids being stuck in home and not being able to go out and you know play with their friends because kids by nature are uh, 
and they are free beings they want to go out and you know human beings are social beings so that is that innate desire to connect with another human being is very very strong among kids it's it's like we grow and we try to restrain ourselves and restrict ourselves otherwise all kids would be you know tumbling down in the mud all the time together they would like to do that so it's having it's it's um, having a toll so i often tell parents first and foremost you know um, let children hug you and kiss you and become physical with them and let them play with you because they are not able to do that secondly if possible do engage in small play dates because we with with the precautions being taken this can be done third is don't leave them with the tablets and the phones and the laptops they are anyway uh, you know st- struggling with the screen so much and they might want to do that because they don't have anything else to do but they should not be doing that so we have to take a lead fourth thing ensure physical exercise because that is not happening enough and that is very very important physical exercise has a direct impact on the mental well being also so these are few of the things that need to be done and reduce the um, negative discussions how many people are dying how the things are going high for how finance because the child perceives your anxiety and we need to be able to help them and for the child you know mental uh, evolution or emotional evolution this is the time because this is going to have far reaching consequences so let's be more positive uh, at least around them if we can't be for ourselves sure sure so uh, doctor do you think uh, having a mental health issue uh, impacts or you know the immunity part definitely uh, in fact there are uh, enough research studies that show that uh if you have high stress chemical in your system you are more prone to develop illnesses in in fact a simple example is that you would often uh, you know see children develop cough and cold during exam only and the thing that you have been trying to prevent happens you would start developing stomach issues when you have a important uh, interview you will develop a zit when you have to meet a uh, boyfriend and you have a new date why is this happening uh, this is no coincidence because high levels of stress chemical cause skin eruptions cause stomach related issues cause lowering of immunity which has been shown in terms of the uh, cellular structure of the blood when the stress chemical is high the cortisol is high as well as uh, um, the actual catching of the illnesses you you develop higher uh, allergy responses also so mental health uh, or stress in general if uh, it is high you are prone to develop more physical issues and does it also affects the you know uh, the neuro- neurological disorders or something like that yes so uh, see um, as i said already our brain is a structure that I, is I'm controlling i'm using the network uh... okay i mean i can hear you clearly and i can uh, see you clearly your, your, okay? your image is little blur okay Mm-hmm. do you want me yeah. to reset Please the system ahead. okay so uh no, brain ha- serves uh, three major functions one is that it runs our body so the autonomic nervous system is controlling our heart our gi system our urinary system so every function in the body is occurring because the the parts in the brain are controlling the system so if that part gets affected even if your eyes are all good and there's nothing wrong but if your optic uh, your uh, the vision center in the brain is disturbed you won't be able to see anything so that's how it controls the second aspect of the brain is the thinking perception feeling emotion that is the higher mental function the intellectual capacity and the final aspect is the defense mechanism how you respond to the threat around you so uh, our neurological uh, um, disorders are directly linked to as well as affected by our emotional state so people who tend to have high stress uh, chemicals in their system um, i think again there is a network issue is the network fine now no i think the voice uh, went back again okay yeah i think now you can yeah it's better okay. now right 
so uh, so i was saying that the neurological uh, system is therefore directly connected to so if there is a neurological problem for for example say parkinsons it tend to occur along with that in uh, head injury patients we see uh, many psychiatric symptoms like uh, mood fluctuations anger irritability that is pretty high in uh, patients who suffer from head injuries similarly if you um, um, see many of the other like stroke in stroke patients also the mood disturbances are pretty high so all these things are interlinked one thing uh, affects the other thing so we have to go for a, um, a multidisciplinary approach in treating these patients uh, with neurologist as well as a psychiatrist taking care of the emotional aspects of the problems also so uh, so doctor uh, do you think a person who is going through from a mental health uh, they they understand their full potential what they can do do they realize that even see the definition of mental well being is the ability to reach your potential that is well being so well being is not uh, just a mere absence of a disease if you go by the definition it's basically uh being able to you know reach your potential live a fulfilling life and satisfactory life so somebody who is suffering from a mental health issue is obviously not able to do that because of various reasons you are meant to enjoy your surroundings and focus on positives and if you are not feeling happy or if you are feeling negative or anxious you are likely to focus more on the negative than on the positive and uh, the food doesn't taste that great if you are not feeling good you your sleeps not as satisfactory if you are anxious or stressed out and uh, similarly uh, uh, ability to concentrate focus and perform well gets affected if you are having mental health issues but once we treat the patient once we treat that chemical imbalance most of our patients are able to achieve normalcy most of our patients are able to because the aim is to be a person so so we will all have our issues we will sometimes be happy sometimes be sad and uh, you know it's it's always a process to be able to reach your potential which is always fluctuating but you will be able I, to do that the to the again i'm losing the network again just let me put yeah is it okay look better yeah okay so hopefully this will be better so that's why i was saying that the aim of the treatment is to be able to reach our potential maximum potential I think there's a network issue. Uh, I'll just try to get her back. Okay, can I'm you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can. Yeah, sure. So, uh, my last question to you is, Dr. Jyoti, that uh, any tips for everyone, you know, whoever is watching it now or they will watch it later also, that how to have a good mental health. I mean, people yeah. give us, you know, have a good uh, good tips for having a good health. uh physical health so please give us some tips for having a good mental health okay sure see since uh, i i was keen on talking about the investment aspect i would say yes, invest sure. your thought into it so yeah, um when you have to focus on good mental health it means that you have to focus on prevention uh more than the cure and how do you prevent a mental problem from occurring that is why uh investing time into it it's more time than money and prioritizing your life in a proper manner so a work life balance is very important thinking positive is very important being grateful like you mentioned you know practicing gratitude is very important so there are three things that used to be in our culture that we have kind of forgotten and i would reiterate that again one thing is we used to pray 
now prayer the purpose is not to ask for more it's to thank for what we have so gratitude is basically being able to thank for what we have that helps us focus on the positives around us because if we want to thank we have to focus on something positive right so focus on if on a daily basis you just pick up one thing to be grateful about it will make you think positively it will reduce the stress chemical in your system second do something that you enjoy for the process not for the gain if you do something that you enjoy just for the sake of it say singing not to you know win uh, saregama awards but just to you know enjoy that process and let the children do that too let the children build up a hobby as well because you know focusing mostly on you know kal ka socho kya ho jayega exam mein number kam aayenge us university mein admission nahi hoga none of that is that is important if you are not enjoying the process so focus True. on something day on a daily basis that you enjoy and third thing is that physical exercise is meant to make us feel good not just physically but mentally there is a release of endorphins so do that because it is reducing day by day with our socio cultural environment and digital uh, thing going on even children are not able to do that the way we used to do so daily uh, indulging in a sport activity because it builds team spirit it builds a sense of bonding social camaraderie and you know it's it's always a good feeling to win and accept your losses develops tolerance one two is your focusing on positive and three doing something that you enjoy on a regular basis should be the three things these are important uh, again we keep losing the net uh, no i, I can hear you okay I yeah and i'll add two more to it what is important is time management um the fact that we are rushing through the day all the time isn't that great so we need to have time um so sleep on time wake up on time always used to work should work now also because it is more natural circadian rhythm we should be able to sleep and wake up on time and finally of course diet is also important for mental health especially omega 3 fatty acids vitamin b12 all these are important components of uh, neurotransmitters or neurochemicals that make us feel good and finally uh, if you have a problem don't shy away from talking about it the communication is the key go talk to somebody anybody you know just don't go by the myth that if you are not able to deal with a pro- problem there is a weakness in you we all have difficulty in dealing with lots of problems just swiping it under the carpet is not going to help go ahead talk to somebody i mean that is a bigger bravery than anything else so i think this should help us prevent most of the problems and if there is any other issue i mean come meet me and we'll talk about it sure i think amazingly you have mentioned and clarified amazing tips i mean they are very clear and little different from what i keep listening from people so i think i really <laughs> liked it uh, i got a question uh, maybe we can just pick up this one also saying that uh, ma'am can we say that the all mature defense mechanisms are conscious or is it only suppression that is considered conscious uh um, it's really for me to understand sup- okay this this probably is coming from a psychology student so yeah. see suppression is a defense mechanism when your conscious is unable to face something and there is a deliberate attempt to suppress that experience feeling or memory so it does come from from the conscience but there are many mature defense mechanisms which are positive this one is not a positive defense mechanism but this is a psychology question i don't think it helps most people i think guys you should connect with her directly for such chances <laughs> maybe yeah. a layman might not understand it those terms are a little tricky mm-hmm. so thank mm. you so much dr jyoti i think it was really great to have you here on this specific day and it is very important i think everyone who is listening to it and whoever will watch it even if they take one tip and in case they are going through with a mental stress or issue they can just connect with you or whoever they know that you know somebody who can help them uh, we can actually save a lot of lives we can save people we can save a lot of issues problems health issues so i think uh, thanks for your time it was great uh, you know speaking with you uh, on instagram thanks, thanks so much thanks thanks a lot